Fesker Ma Ismisha Jason. And welcome to this first video lesson here. Today, let's look at eight essential words, eight effective and simple ways to communicate thoughts and opinions. Plus, they're just a lot of fun to say. So, let's start off with what they actually mean. That's what we've got to do first. We've got to sort out what the Gallic words mean before we use them a bunch. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of noise, isn't it? Gleva. Gleva. Okay, so our first one here. Mor. Mor. It means big. Mor. Mor. <laughs> Mor. I'm going to be doing gestures like this because they make the Gallic stick in your mind more because you're going to remember the long-haired hippie guy going like this. And if you want to do the gestures with me, you'll remember them better because you're using muscle memory. Yeah. So that's a secret way to remembering these words very naturally, very quickly. Muscle memory. Okay. So, more, more, more. All right. Gleva, 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 gleva. Okay, we have more. Big, big. Big, big, big. <laughs> more. Big. More, 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 more. Big. More, big. Big. More. Okay. More. Big. Big can kind of be tricky because it sounds a bit like big. <laughs> with time and with practice, big, you'll just know, oh, that's small. It'll be no problem. But it does take a little time to get to that point. All right. We have more. Big. Snock. 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 Aw, snock. Snock. Something's nice. Snock. The way I was taught um, way back when in Nova Scotia, um, so this is a bit more of a traditional perspective, snock was really for appearance. Someone looks nice, or it means they look cute. So traditionally, snock was really used for people. People, yeah. Um, may maybe animals too, come to think of it, like pets, pets, yeah. These days, in a lot of places, snock is used for, you know, almost anything, like a, a nice house, or a nice meal, or a nice movie, that kind of thing. But traditionally, it was mainly for appearance. Something looks cute, something looks nice. Okay, <clears throat> snock. So we have, so we have mold, Big, snock, snock. Okay, doing great. Let's come down to grot. <laughs> grot. Grot is very, very expressive. You mean horrible, horrible, or awful, gross, or rotten. Any of those. Grot is very useful. Grot. So if you have milk that's been in the fridge for a long time, it could be grot. But if someone is being really unpleasant, you know, they're having a bad day, maybe taking it out on other people, they could be acting grot. You could say, oh, they're just grot today. Mm-hmm. And of course, if you don't like, if you don't like something, if you're not a fan of snow, or ice, or that kind of thing, of winter weather. It could be grot, in your opinion. Grot is very handy. Grot. And also, grot is very similar to grotty in Scottish English. Grotty. Yeah, grotty. 
Mm, I'm not 100% sure which came first, but they're definitely connected, right? Because grady means the same thing in Scottish English. Okay. Gleva. Gleva. <clears throat> so, more, big, snock, grot. <laughs> grot, grot, grot. And I'm rolling the R a bit more than I usually would, so you can hear it better. Grot, grot, <laughs> grot. Mm, mm. If rolling the R is tricky, maybe do some practice with it. I'm sure there are other videos on YouTube about rolling that R. Um, so for some folk, there are a lot of rolled R's in their language already, so it might come easy. Others, it might take a lot of practice. It took me a lot of work to roll that. Grot, grot. So if it's not so easy for you right now, don't worry. It will be. It will be, over time, with practice. All of this will become very natural to you. The main thing is that you hear them a lot and understand what you hear. That way it just builds up in your mind more and more, and then one day it'll just come out very easily. Yeah. All right. We got grot, snock, beak, more, more. Doing great. So we got the first four. Let's see what these mean. Bria. This is one of my favorite Gaelic words, actually. Bria. 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 Beautiful. Bria. Or pretty. You know, whatever word feels most natural to you. Bria. This is one of many words for pretty in Gaelic. Bria, Bria, Bria. This E is a little longer. That's why there's the little mark above it. A little accent mark, it means it's a long E. So it's not Bria, it's Bria, Bria. These accent marks give Gaelic a lot of the rhythm and the flow, like the song-like quality that it has. Bria, Bria, Bria. Yeah. Mm, bria. How to remember Bria. Bria. Good gesture. Bria. Or think of something you find beautiful. Um, bria. Bria. For an Outlander fan, I'm sure you have several names already in your mind. <laughs> several images too, probably. <laughs> bria. 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 Maybe a pet, if you, think, if you think your dog or your cat or whatever pet you have is beautiful. Like, point to them. Bria. Bria. If you think I'm beautiful, point to me. Go for it, if I'm your cup of tea. <laughs> Bria. Any connection you can make between these words and your life makes them come alive for you, makes Gaelic a real living experience for you. And it's also a very quick way to remember them. Because if, if you think Bria, oh, that's like my dog. I think my dog's Bria. Bria, ah, just like my dog you're going to remember it very quickly because the dog is meaningful to you. So that's another secret. First secret is hearing these words a lot so that they just become natural. So they get kind of stuck in your head. The second secret is to, if possible, connect them with words, uh, with things that are meaningful to you in your life. Bria. 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 All right. Bria. Same with snock. Snock. If you think your pet or a a pet of a friend is really nice, really cute. Think of that. Or maybe someone has a, a new baby, or you think your niece is really pretty. Yeah. Anything at all, anything at all. Snock, making these connections between words. All right. <laughs> this horrible looking word. <laughs> Gifricha. 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 Gifricha means different. Gifricha. Gifricha. Yeah, so this di makes a kind of a j sound here. Gifricha. And te on the end, that makes a ch sound. Ch. <clears throat> Gifricha. 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 
And once you get used to the sounds of this word, like the internal sounds here, the, the sounds in the middle, you might be able to start hearing it as being similar to the word different. Jifricha, different. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there, are, there are a number of spellings for this too. There, there's not just one way to spell it. So you'll, you'll see it in ways that are jifricha. <laughs> jifricha. <clears throat> All right. So, mor, ik, snok, grot, bria, jifricha, jifricha, ah, jifricha, <laughs> ah, jifricha. Ooh, one of my absolute favorite words, blasta. Blasta means tasty or yummy. However you want to translate that, like delicious, anything like that. Blasta. Blasta. Mmm. Mm. So a connection you could make could be with a food that you really like or a, a drink that you really like. Blasta. 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 One of my students <laughs> came up with this really good example. He said, oh, ha pasta blasta. Pasta is blasta. Pasta is tasty. Ha pasta blasta. And that's just fun to say. I mean, say that 20 times. It's a bit of a, a, a tongue twister. Yeah. <laughs> blasta. Mmm, blasta. Blasta. Okay. Gleva. Gleva. You're doing great. Gleva. If looking at these words and the spelling is stressing you out a little bit, don't worry. <laughs> it stresses everyone out at first. Over time, with practice, it'll just become normal. It'll become normal. And you'll just be able to write it, no problem. But that will take a little while. Because Gaelic is just so different, at least in my experience, from any other language I've learned. Yeah. All right. We're coming down to our last one here. Ma. 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 Good. Ma. Ma. <laughs> ma. Ma. I tend to do a thumbs up for ma. Ma. <laughs> ma. Ma. And one of my students, <laughs> they, made a, they made a joke. This was when I was teaching in Scotland in high school. They, they looked at that and they, they really weren't a fan of maths. They didn't like mathematics, math class at all. So they said, math, oh yeah, ha, ma, ha math, ma, well, she said maths because she's Scottish. Ha maths, ma, kind of rolled their eyes a bit, full of sarcasm. <laughs> if you're not a fan of, <laughs> of maths, then this could be a way to remember it. You know, like, oh yeah, ha math, ma, yeah, right. But if you do enjoy mathematics, a math, ma, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Mm. And I'm going to give you a bonus one here too. It kind of connects with ma. And luckily it's really easy to spell and to say. <laughs> dona, dona, dona. Donna. 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 Ma? Donna. <laughs> Ma? Donna. <laughs> Donna. 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 You'll hear it sometimes. Usually it's part of um, a, lo a longer phrase. Like, I'm not bad. Like, how are you? Oh, I'm not bad. That kind of thing. How was the, how was the trip? Oh, it wasn't bad. That kind of thing. You'll hear it, you'll hear it in that quite, quite often. Yeah. All right. So here are your eight really useful and expressive words that you can use to communicate your thoughts and opinions quite easily. Okay. Gleva. 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 